What it is you do is your boy Nancy coming back with another bulls. I have a tutorial here today on the channel. So I wanted to go over how to get those pro main street sounds kind of like offset. Okay. So if you guys do enjoy this video, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what other artists y'all want to see me break down your favorite artists, how you get that sound. So we not playing around right now. Let's get to it. Okay. Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade with Brand new birthday, and a Kelly for baby Spend that money, she never gon' go away Caught her out of the gun Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade with Brand new birthday, and a Kelly for baby Spend that money, she never gon' go away Caught her out of the gun Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade with Brand New back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her the Okay, so that's me doing my best impression of Offset, and let's go over how we get that sound. I already did Quavo. I did a general, like, Migos, um, you know, type of template. So, yeah, it's really dope. I remember being in middle school, bumping that No Label 3 back in the day, you feel me, when I was a kid, when that's when the first Migos, um, you know, came out type situation. And, um, yeah, it was really dope because, you know, they all have a, a perfect type of role, you know, a flavor. You know, R.I.P. Takeoff, Quavo, and Offset. I always feel like Offset was a very underrated rapper. So let's go over this, how you get that sound. So most importantly with Offset, first thing I want to talk about his, is his auto-tune sound. You know, his his flow kind of reminds me of a do 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 an AK-47, a do 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 an assault rifle, a do 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 an SMG, MP, you know, 5 or whatever from Modern Warfare 3. He's got that submachine gun, Tommy gun, mobster type of flow. You know, that's very quick and very rapid. You got to keep up with it. You feel me? That triple flow. Da, 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 da. It kind of sounds like he's rapping in cursive a little bit. Okay. So I like to use the auto tune with a relatively quick retune speed that can keep up with the rapper's flow. Uh, it reminds me of, uh, you know, Bart Simpson on The Simpsons when he used to be coming to school late every day. That bus used to be, he used to be chasing after that bus because he was a little too slow to get to the bus. So I don't want my auto tune to be a little bit, you know, unresponsive a little bit lethargic to the words that the rapper's using, so I use the fast retune speed. And the thing about a fast retune speed is you gotta get a good vocal take to make it sound smooth. Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up that. So that's the thing about it. I see a lot of people saying, oh, what, what, what are the settings? What are the settings? There is no perfect setting for the auto tune, you know, to get that m mainstream sound. The most important thing is that a lot of people who are professionals, they, they have professional level vocals, you feel me? Like actual ability to provide a vocal into a microphone. They know how to hit the notes. So when you know how to hit the notes, the auto tune is gonna be smooth, you know, and you can get more and more aggressive with the retune speed. So, you know, that's not something that could really like, show people that's just something that you got to just rap every day and make music every day and then your voice will start to learn how to you know hold steady with the auto tune and hold the note and hit the notes and stuff like that you know that's just straight up musical talent like you know when you were in elementary school and they do do re mi fa so la like it's some shit like that you got to be able to do with your voice a lot of people keep thinking it's the settings but it's not it's the vocal performance is how you get that smooth auto tune let's bypass all of the plugins with and without type of situation so we can see what they're doing like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up now the gut. Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up now the gut. Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Send my dog up the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her up now the gut like it's my birthday I just went and cut me a new AK send my dog up the road some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away brand new back in the Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her up now the gut like it's my birthday I just went and cut me a new AK send my dog up the road some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away brand new back in the Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her up now the gut like it's my birthday I just went and cut me a new Yep, so that's kind of what we went from that, 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 you know, that dusty, you know, in the closet home recording to sounding 
comparable, literally almost exactly like offset tone wise and everything like that. The the way the the uh, uh, compression is moving. So most importantly, I understand with a guy like Offset that his vocal is very modern, you know, very clean, and I kind of. With my strategy as an engineer, you always gotta have a strategy. It's like you going to uh, going to battle with the song, you know, like you going to wartime. You always gotta have a goddamn strategy of how are you going to approach the vocal. So I knew at the gate, okay, I gotta make this like digital sounding, very nice and bright and gritty, but also smooth and very responsive. So I use something like the Shep's Omni Channel, and I use the Odd Order Harmonic Saturation, very dope plugin, right? So the thing about it is Odd Order Harmonics, right? I call it, uh, you know, they come from pento tubes, right? I call it pent uh, pent up odd anger you know what i mean and you know pento tubes usually come from something like a sony c800 and you know that with that bright crispy gritty top that type of tube saturation versus where something like a la2a has trio tubes with which i call are you even trying to get fat because with trio tubes they make it warm they kind of roll off the top end they they, they add a little bit of that that that, that nice campfire uh, you know hot chocolate over the christmas type of fire warmth to a vocal type shit you know so most importantly i used a little bit of odd order harmonic distortion to bring about a little bit of hey you know it kind of makes the eyes open up it makes the vocal a little bit more alert you feel me a little bit more crunchy as well then i use a little bit of vca compression we know that vca has a snappy sound you know you can access that through something like a ssl e channel or g channel but i like the sheps better because i'm not getting all the other components from the SSLE and the SSLG. I'm just getting the straight up VCA, the snappy, gritty, nasty, Rottweiler, pit bull type of distortion, uh, compression type of sound, you know, gritty compression. Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK, sent my dog up the road some J-Pay, I had two pretty hoes to trade away, brand new back in that Kelly for baby, spend that money, she never gonna go away, cut her up, now the glass. Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK, sent my dog up the road some J-Pay, I had two pretty hoes to trade away, Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that. So as you guys can hear, you can hear what the auto order harmonics are doing. Just really giving a lot of that cr crunch to the upper mid where a lot of that transient in his vocals that is kind of really enhancing it, but I'm doing it very, very subtly. And of course, we used a little bit of thump. It kind of gives us a little bit of, of Hershey's cookies and cream, vanilla type of saturation sound. Kind of balances everything out a little bit. I like it. It gives a little bit of that warmth, hot chocolate warmth. And of course, I just did a little high shelf um, at 5K so I, I could have my high end flutter around. That's very important for a rapper with a fast flow like that. I'm trying to make it be like, a situation where he's rapping in cursive but because my high end is pushed up a little bit on that high shelf it's it's letting the high end flutter around a little bit so i can now start to see the spaces in between the cursive writing of the rapper you know what i mean so i can hear the transitions of his flows better and then after that we're going into a de or nothing crazy uh the most important thing to understand with a de is proximity effect right because sometimes uh, you know people who like aren't used to like recording music and stuff like that they might come up a little bit closer and that that, that might bring up a little bit more um, of the high end energy, right? You know, from take to take. You know what I mean? So you don't want your de to be jumping all around the place. So as an engineer, you're responsible to tell the rapper, hey, man, that was a great take, but hey, can you back up a little bit and hold your position, you know, to the microphone? Oh, yeah, you're perfect. Just stay right there. All you got to tell is people is just stay right there. Don't even move. You feel me? And the vibe of the studio, they're just going to stay right there. They're going to keep rapping. They're going to hear that first good take, a consistent take. Boom. They do another one. They do another one. And the de is going to work smoothly. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some J-Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade away. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her up not the glass like yeah so uneven performances can make your ds or like work wildly so that's a, a great way that you can help yourself you know a lot of times these problems that you might have in the doll you could actually fix it outside of the doll by just coaching the artist or you just being an engineer and just observing the rapper when people when i'm in the studio recording people i'm always like this you feel my body is open. I'm looking at the rapper as they're rapping. I'm paying attention to their body language because that's going to tell me if they like the take. But also, is this motherfucker rapping into this microphone the right way and hitting the microphone the right way? Some people would even rap into a microphone if it was turned around. They would be like, oh, shit, I didn't even know the microphone was on the other side. Like, I just touched it. Like, type shit like that. You got to be accountable as an engineer. Uh, using the uh, C4 pop vocal preset, we already know what I'd be doing around here. Uh, and, of course, I 
adjusted the um the knee of the uh you know multi band compressor and this kind of created a little bit more jack, jagged hiccup type of you know abrupt type of tone type of sound you know so that knee is that transition of the compression you know I like it's kind of like I'm a blacksmith when I'm an engineer boom boom you know that blacksmith that boy be banging on that goddamn sword he banging on that sword and depending on how hard he bangs on the sword while it's hot you know he hitting the iron that's going to determine how sharp it is so that's how I'm, I am as an engineer I'm determining how sharp I want my uh, compression to be how sharp do I want my vocal to be with a fast spitting rap vocal like this I want it to be fast and a little bit sharp like it's my birthday I just went and caught me a new AK sent my dog up the road some JPEG I had two pretty hoes the tray way brand new back ain't like Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her out of the gun like it's my birthday I just went and caught me a new AK sent my dog up the road some JPEG I had two pretty hoes the tray way brand new back ain't like Kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away so a beautiful way of using something like multiband compression to add not only brightness, but also to, you know, adjust the tone. You know, how is the, uh, you know, vocal speaking? I, you know, maybe the rapper is already lit, but now I kind of want to, if I want to tone it down a little bit, I might use the optical behavior, which will kind of like, you know, be a little bit less responsive and everything like that. You know, be a little less grabby, a little bit less of flutter and movement and confetti all over the party type of shit. So um, we have the CLA 3A and, you know, you got to understand too like when you're in a situation between the compressor and the limiter you got to think about it like a pencil right the ratio is like a pencil the compression like you know anything below uh the ratio of 20 or less is going to be a compressor anything that's 20 or more is going to be a limiter so it's like a pencil you know when you was in school you had a goddamn pencil that pencil sometimes when you was writing with that pencil it started to become dull it started to become a little bit less sharp that would be like using a ratio that's 20 or below but then when you go to that sharpener boom 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 you hit that sharpener that shit's super sharp that's kind of like having a limiter now it's super sharp it's super precise and accurate so usually when i'm looking for tone out of a compressor like this for a fast rapper, I'm going with the limiter part because the limiter part is allowing me to get a little bit more of that. You feel me? It's now starting to insinuate some of the good parts of his flow. And all it took is one button in understanding that. Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK Sent my dog up the road some JPEG I had two pretty hoes the tray way Brand new back in that Kelly for baby You tell me. Which one sounds like a unsharpened pencil and a sharpened pencil between the compressor and limiter? Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some JPEG. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up, not a gun. Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some JPEG. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. So even though they're both doing 1 dB of compression, you hear what I'm talking about. One sounds like an unsharpened pencil and the other one sounds like a sharpened pencil. And that's just because of the tone of what changing the ratio does to a vocal. It makes it talk differently. I remember when I was trying to learn this and these stupid ass, you know, people on YouTube were like, well, for every 3 dB over the ratio, the threshold, the question, and they, they made it so fucking difficult to understand. Like, that's one thing about my channel. I take the most difficult shit to understand and make it simple. And I feel like everybody else, they take the most simplest shit and they make it impossible possible to understand so it's like oh my god this person is a mixing god when they really don't know shit at all you feel me because if you really know something about a subject matter you know how to break it down and make it so simple because you mastered it you feel me so that's the uh most important thing with that cla 3a it's giving me a little bit of uh transformer warmth as well so i was cutting off uh the low end of the vocal um and also, you know, bringing it back in with that transformer warmth, understanding the components, right? Most important thing, too, is the low end is kind of like the sword, coming back to the sword. You know, that blacksmith, he's got to have a handle on that sword. If you have a double-edged sword, it would be a situation where you can't even grab onto the sword because it just has two edges. It's sharp on both edges. So I made my low end smooth, and I made my high end sharp. So listen to it. Just by me adjusting the cue of this, this is also going to change how soft or how hard that handle is on the sword. Like like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some JPEG. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up now the glass. Like it's my birthday, I just went and cut me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some JPEG. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money. So just kind of imagine it like I said, it was a sword. You feel me? 
as you hear, as I'm making the cue tighter, that's being a little bit more aggressive on the low end, it feels like the bottom end of the vocal is sharp on both sides. And because it's kind of sharp on both sides, it kind of distracts you from the true high end that's moving around with his real vocal, his real flow that's going on. So that's the way how I envision, you know, something like EQ and compression and stuff like that is in, you know, material objects. You feel me? You hear with a smoother low end, it's kind of like a handlebar that is smooth and the sword, that which is the tip of the, you know, the, the tip of the iron is sharp you feel me so it's, it's some situation like that type shit uh after that we have the fresh air bringing a little bit of that to the vocal like it's my birthday i just when they caught me and do 8k send my dog up the road some j pay i had two pretty hoes the tray way brand new burke ain't like kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her out of the gut like it's my birthday i just when they caught me and do 8k send my dog up the road some j pay i had two pretty hoes the tray way brand new burke ain't like kelly for baby spend that money she never all right, and most importantly, I like to use something like the uh, another deesser after the fresh air to kind of counteract, you know, what the fresh air does because it brings in that super nice top. I love it so much, but you know, I don't want it to be become too annoying, too aggressive. So um, I, I I use like another deesser after that, and I look for the airplane frequency in the vocal. Baby Roll some J-Pay I had two pretty hoes so I kind of treat it like I'm a surgeon or a doctor with that stethoscope. I'm looking for where that, that mosquito type of, uh, you know, frequency is at, that, that private jet type of frequency that's super top end, and I'm DSing that a little bit. You can't necessarily hear it, but it, I feel like, you know, that's the type of high end that will creep up on you and give you ear fatigue for the listener. And when listeners get ear fatigue, it kind of, you know, gives them a tired feeling that resonates with them that don't make them want to play the song again. So, you know, I always try to mix with the the ear of listening to a song a hundred times because that's what I do. Whenever I have a song I like, I keep playing that bit over and over and over and over and over again. So when I mix, I always think about it like, yo, if I had to play this song a thousand times, like how would it sound after the thousandth time? Would, it, would the song make me tired? You feel me? So that's kind of how, you know, I see it personally. You can see it in a different way, but that's just some food for thought. After that, we have an Arvox that's bringing a little bit of that chest, that bench press, is putting that, that vocal on that bench press and giving a little bit of chest and shoulders. You feel me? Making it sit up straight a little bit. Like it's my birthday. I did when they cut me and do AK. Send my dog up the road some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new Burke ain't like Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up out of gut. Like it's my birthday. I did when they cut me and do AK. Send my dog up the road some J -Pay. I had two pretty hoes to train Okay, after that, we had something like the H delay on a slap delay. And then after that, we're using the, uh, you know, the meta flanger here. I mostly used it as a, a, a stereo spreader. It has this nice little spreader right here. And of course, I used just a little dollop of like phaser, just a little bit. I didn't want it to be audible, but it's kind of a situation where I have my ad libs as I'm setting this, right? And I'm like, man, everything sounds like it's too crunched up. Like when you're moving into a new house or a new apartment or you're going somewhere or on a vacation and you're packing your bag and you're like, damn, I thought I could put the shoes in this box but I can't, I got to put it in this bag because I only got so much space that I'm working with here. You know, so once some ad libs came in, I was like, okay, like, okay, I need to spread out this delay a little bit more. And I used the meta flanger because I liked how it sounded because it's giving a little bit of wobble too. Like it's my birthday. I did when they cut me and do AK. Send my dog up the road some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes the tray way. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up now the gut. Like it's my birthday. I did when they cut me and do AK. Send my dog up the road, some J -Pay. I had two pretty hoes, the tray way. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up, not a gut. Like it's my birthday. I did when they cut me and do AK. Send my dog up the road, some J -Pay. So you guys get the idea, you know, Jiffy, Peter Pan type of peanut butter spread. Spreading that delay and making it not too focused in the middle because I want the focus, the vocal to be focused. All right. After that, we're using the Abbey Rhodes plate and understanding the mindset, you know, consistency, consistency, consistency. If you want to become a good engineer, you got to be at it consistently. You know, there's no, you're not going to be able to just learn everything in one day and just become the best. That's with anything in life, though. That's literally anything in life. You know, it takes a little, a step here, a step there, day by day, brick by brick, you slowly build up your ability. Same uh, type of mindset applies the mixing right because 
I said I want my vocal to be a little bit gritty. So what I did is I actually added a little bit of grit into the reverb, you feel me? So there's different ways that you can add a little bit of that manure, a little bit of that dirt on your shoulders, a little bit of that nastiness, a little bit of that COVID-19, a little bit of those germs, of that disgustingness on to the vocal, you feel me? So, you know, I pushed in a little bit of odd order harmonics because that's my mindset at the gate. I want a little bit of dirt, right? But then I'm like, okay, my reverb is going to be dirty too, you feel me? But just a little bit. So it doesn't have to all be dirty all at one stop shop. It it can be dirty a little bit here and then a little bit there. You feel me? That's kind of like how when you're in your room as a jit, you feel me? First, you throw that shirt on the ground. Then you throw that sock on the other side of the room. Then you throw the pillow over there. Next thing you know, the whole room becomes dirty. You feel me? Because you slowly accumulate that dirt over time type shit. All right? Um, and let's listen to the reverb. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Said my dog was the road, some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes, the trainway. Brand new back in the Kelly for baby. Spent that money, she never gonna go away. Cut like it's my birthday. I just when they caught me and do AK. So that's what it's kind of doing. It's really adding a, little, a lot of that crunch, flattening out the reverb. Use the doubler stomp. I like the doubler stomp a lot because it's like a guitar pedal. So man, it sounds way better than doubler two. I can never even use doubler two ever again, low key. Because when I think of a doubler, I think of H3000, AMS, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, Eminem, like those doubles. That's real double, like a doubler pitch shifting type of stuff. And those doublers had like ADA converters. They added a little bit of saturation on the way in. And I just feel like something like doubler two is way too sterile. I much prefer to use a uh, doubler stomp because it has that nastiness. It has that grit. It has a little bit of that mud, a little bit of that street authority with that offset, a rapper like offset, you know, it makes it a lot uh, easier to make his lyrics believable when you add some mud. You know, he said he came from the mud. So you put a little bit of mud on his damn vocal. <laughs> Like it's my birthday, I just went and caught me a new AK Sent my dog out the road some j -Pay. I had two pretty hoes the trainway Brand new back in the Kelly for baby Spend that money, she never gonna go away Cut her up now the That sounds so much better than Doubler too because it kind of has like this nasty little flanger modulation and that in itself will blend with the auto tune and just make it smooth creamy buttermilk basket type of vocal sound you feel me so that's why i use doubler stomp over doubler two um and okay after that we have the cla 76 um you know and of course using this all buttons in compression is very important for a rapper like this because it zooms in on the nuances the attention the detail on his flow he's rapping flow, da, 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 the flow okay he's rapping a little bit faster something like this type of parallel compression not only brings in presence but it's, it's just the fact that it literally boosts up the noise floor when you put it on all buttons in ratio also the saturation is literally changing the bias current going into the unit is changing as well you feel me so that in itself just blows up the signal <laughs> blows that bitch up like an airhead you feel me like it's my birthday i just went and caught me a new ak sent my dog out the road some j -Pay. i had two pretty hoes the trainway brand new back in the kelly for baby spend that money she never gonna go away cut her up now the glass like it's my birthday i just went and caught me a new ak sent my dog out the road some j -Pay. i had two pretty hoes the trainway brand new back in the kelly for baby spend that so he's pretty much rapping in cursive with that triple flow. It's like italicized words. You feel me? It's like italicized. It kind of it's got a curve to it. Every word's got a curve. Th -th -th curves to it. You know. So I want to be able to use the parallel compression as a way to zoom in. You know, to zoom in to look a little bit closer in in between the spaces of the words. You feel me? And the the spaces in between the sheet of paper that he's writing on, which is the beat. You feel me? The beat is a flat sheet of paper, and his lyrics are the words on top of the beat, on top of the sheet of paper type shit, you know? So I wanna see the detail, I wanna see the spaces in between it, and that's what that CLA 76 brings in. Okay, the ad-libs, man, we murked the ad-libs. We slapped the ad-libs up the head. What we used is the Shep 73 and um, the Shep's Omnichannel, right? And of course, that's how I'm gluing my lead vocal to my background vocal uh, with the ad libs is understanding that, okay, I use the 76, the CLA 76, which is a fat compressor on my lead vocal. So maybe on my ad libs, I should use another fat compressor and maybe use it a little bit differently type shit like that, you know? So fat compressor again, right? On the ad libs, a uh, relatively fast attack infinity ratio again and uh, a very quick release. So kind of like the same settings, but the most important thing is the Sheps Omni Channel is not giving me that transformer. It's not giving me, you know, the other circuitry from the CLA 76. I'm just getting the sound of the compression, how it's making the vocal pump and breathe, the ad-libs, right? So I get to pick the type of saturation I want. You feel me? I pick the heavy mode, 
right here. And I, I cranked it up a lot. I rolled off a little bit of top, a little bit of bottom. And I did use a little bit of that Hershey's cookie and cream thump to add a little bit of smoothness. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some J-Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut her up, not the glass. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some J-Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away. Cut you know, it just helps add a little bit more of a, a pump up, a little bit more of a hype, man. In a situation like this, too, I want my ad-libs to be heard. And whenever I want my ad-libs to be heard, I like to push a little bell. You feel me? A little bit of bell. Just a little push just so that you can actually start to hear the transient of the word. And I did this strategically, too, knowing that I'm boosting up this specific part. And it's going into the reverb, too, you know. So this is how the studio rack works. All this, boom, then it hits this and it goes to the reverb. That's pretty important because it makes the reverb feel longer than what it is. I'm pushing the transient into the reverb, and it's also helping bring out the articulation. I could, I could hear what's going on with the ad lib. So if you've got a dense mix and you feel like, man, I want to hear hey, ah, those ad libs are contributing to the verse, you might just want to put that little bell right there and just push it like a dB or two. That's the hell frequency. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Send my dog up the road some J-Pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money, she never gonna go away cut her up not the glass like it's my birthday i just went and caught me a new ak sent my dog up the road some j pay i had two pretty hoes to trade way brand new all right so after that we had an rvox added in some presents and a lot of gating and we used another meta flanger as well and this was just like as another stereo spreader a little bit of that wobble look at that jiggle 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 wiggle 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 all right and the maximum stereo spread to make them ad libs wide and spacious uh, another type of, um, you know, Abbey Road's plate, but the dampener is uh, way higher, you know, and uh, I use less crosstalk as well. So a different type of plate too. So, you know, the same plugin, but with different settings and I'm extending the high end. I'm letting the high end go through the whole way type of situation. So you hear the whole, you know, Met Gala, Taj Mahal ceiling of the ad lib. Like it's my birthday. I just went and caught me a new AK. Sent my dog up the road some J pay. I had two pretty hoes to trade way. Brand new back in that Kelly for baby. Spend that money. She never going to go away. Cut her up now the glass. Like it's my birthday. I just. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of the video. If you guys like this tutorial, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, okay? If you want to get the preset, go ahead and check it in the pinned comment down below. All right, I just want to say thank you very much for being a great part of my YouTube family. Don't forget to suggest more artists so I can keep doing this. just want to say thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all now, YouTube. All right, next time, peace.